Stand by SOT-1. Standing. Ten seconds. Ready, rolling. Ready, SOT-1. Ready. In four, three, two, one. Roll in. From legendary Uncle Studios in beautiful Southern California, welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters, the central location for you employees, you employers, and of course, we haven't forgotten about you damn independent contractors. And now, here's this week's edition of Work Comp Matters. And it's a little bit after 12 noon on July 7th. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Work Comp Matters. We are brought to you by theworkcompcentral.com if you want the number one location for workers' compensation in both California and around the United States. Check out theworkcompcentral.com. They've got a free seven-day offer. And if you want to pick up their services, I have them. You should, too. It's only $1 a day. Work Comp Matters is also brought to you by A1 Law, number one computer management system, 818-357-4120. For your no-strings-attached money-back guarantee, also only $1 a day, A1 Law. Uh, Well, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Steve Appel. I'm joined by the madman across the water, John Scalia, and by my chief of staff, Mike Zima. New coronavirus cases roughly doubled in California over the last month. Hospitalizations have soared 88%, filling some medical centers close to capacity. Now, public health officials are bracing for the grimmest phase of the cycle, a spike in COVID-19 fatalities. So far, new deaths have remained relatively flat in California, even even as cases have surged. In the last six weeks, the state has recorded an average of 436 weekly coronavirus deaths down from the previous six-week average of 510 weekly deaths, according to a Los Angeles Times data analysis. But deaths are a lagging indicator, and many experts predict an increase in the coming weeks. California has seen far fewer coronavirus fatalities than some hotspots across the country, recording more than 6,400 deaths, compared to with more than 32,000 deaths in New York and 15,000 in New Jersey. That's 48, 47,000 deaths in New York and New Jersey. How much the death toll in California will rise is the subject of some debate. This new wave of infections is increasingly being driven by younger people, while outbreaks in skilled nursing facilities have slowed. Thank my lucky stars. For that reason, it's possible that fewer of the recent cases will result in deaths. It's hard to say because right now, it's the cloud of information that needs to sort itself out, said Dr. Niha Nanda, healthcare epidemiologist and medical director of infection prevention at Keck Medicine of USC. But others on the front lines say the younger COVID-19 demographics won't necessarily result in a decreased death toll. Adrienne Green, Chief Medical Officer for UC San Francisco Medical Center, said she is worried about the current wave of infections among younger people leading to a subsequent wave for older people who have interreacted with them. Perhaps there might be a lull in the death rates and then they catch up, Green said. I think it's going to be a wave up and down. Answers should come soon, experts say. It can take three to four weeks after exposure uh, for uh, the virus for infected people to become sick enough to be hospitalized and four to five weeks after exposure for some of the most vulnerable patients to die from the disease. California recorded nearly twice the number of coronavirus cases in June as it did in May, 119,938 versus 61,694, according to a Times data analysis. Yet, the number of deaths declined 
with 2,128 people dying in May and 1,915 in June. The GAV, Governor Gavin Newsom, said yesterday that while a higher percentage of coronavirus tests are confirming infections, we're not seeing a commensurate increase yet in mortality. More younger people are also testing positive for the virus, a trend that has become apparent. The economy is reopened and working a gatherings. As I announced yesterday, there are 3 million people, approximately 3 million people diagnosed with COVID-19 in the United States, 1% of the population. 250,000, give or take, diagnosed in California, less than 1% of the population, and 100,000 people diagnosed in Los Angeles County, approximately 1% of the population. That means that 99% of the population has not yet tested positive for COVID-19. Now, does that mean the numbers could be off? There are some people uh, that are diagnosed that have not been diagnosed? Well, sure, numbers could absolutely be off. 10%, 25%, 50%. Uh, hopefully the numbers aren't off 100%, but even if they were, that means that 98% of the population has not yet been infected by COVID-19. The virus is as contagious, if not more contagious than it was before, and we have no serum and we have no cure. The numbers only have one place to go because numbers don't lie, and that is up. We are going to be seeing more people infected, more people diagnosed, and I don't think we ever flatten the curve, okay? Uh, you want to talk about a second wave? <laughs> it might be here. It might be coming soon. Mike, what's your take? Well, there's just so many unknowns. Uh, the latest that I've been listening to and noting are, if you will, the worst case scenarios. There was that Broadway actor who was a relatively young man. I think he might have been, I think he was between 40 and 45. And a few days ago, he passed on. But the word was that prior to his passing, I mean, for crying out loud, they had to cut off one of his legs and he had sepsis and his kidneys failed, yada, yada, yada. And there was one guy I heard interviewed this morning who had roughly the same experience. They had to cut off his toes and his fingers for some reason. I'm sure it had to do with circulation. Um, and his kidneys checked out, his liver checked out, uh, but he survived. So and, and now his internal organs are functioning fine. And he was in his early to mid 50s, had no comorbidities and was in excellent health. So there, there, there's just so many curveballs in this whole thing. John Scalia, you're in Munich, Germany. We've talked on the many sh uh, on the show many times about the population of Munich, Germany being compliant with rules, regulations, social distancing, and how the United States is the wild, wild west. I asked you yesterday if you uh, knew the population, which, if I'm not mistaken, you said about 80 million, but then yeah, you so I was 90, 90, uh, but you didn't yeah. know at the time how many people had been officially diagnosed. Uh, have you got that number for us yet? No, I didn't check. I can do it, though. I mean, our testing, I was going to point out that your your statistical analysis is, is problematical because you keep saying only 1% only have tested positive. That's true, but the United States has tested such a small percentage of its people, you really don't know what percentage of the population is positive. I mean, it's total guesswork and total speculation when you say well, only one or two percent is, is positive. Well, so that's what? why I said, John, country, that's why I said, that's why I said, you, even finish if, my sentence? you may finish your sentence, sir. Go ahead. Thank you. So in, in a country that doesn't do testing, that number is meaningless. Go ahead. Well, if the number is meaningless, then uh, I've got nothing to respond to. <laughs> <laughs> but, but if hold on, Mike, hold on, Mike, hold on. But 
if the number does mean something, I specifically said the number might be off 10%, 25%, 50%. Hell, the number could be off 100%. But But, but that's no. Yeah, but see, again, you didn't really do well in math, did you? (laughs) I mean, the the fact is that it doesn't matter. The, the number could be off 100%. That doesn't matter. My point is, if you only test 10% of the population, then you have no idea what the real number is. So it's total speculation to say, even if the number is off by 100%, no, it might be off a million percent when you don't test anyone. It might be off 10, it might be off 10 times, 100 times, 1,000 times, or 10,000 times with as little testing as you've done in America. Um. Those are all very good points. However, you neglected to say one thing, which I suspect you know, is that at least now in Southern California, uh, you can be tested for free. You might have to wait in line a couple hours or in your car, but anybody that wants a test can get a test. I know people that have been tested multiple times. And John, you know the old saying that you can lead a horse to water, okay? but you can't make him drink. We can't force people to be tested. I've heard mixed reports on whether or not it's really true that you can get a free test anywhere you want in Los Angeles. I mean, do you know anybody, you know, people who've done that? Is that it? I know people that have waited in line for free tests right in my neighborhood in, in Woodland Hills in Warner center. They're also doing free testing at Dodger stadium. I don't have a listing of all the places. Okay. They are, but it's still voluntary compliance. Yes, it's, already, it's not mandatory. Right. That is correct. And in fact, there are there are polls out where over 50 percent of the people said uh, if the tests were readily available, you didn't have to wait in line. Would you get one answer? No. If mm-hmm. a serum were if a vaccine were available today and you didn't show any symptoms, would you take it? Answer? No. I mean, this is truly really <laughs> the what this is the wild, wild west. But, John, if you get a chance, I would very much like you to get that uh, approximate number out of the 90 million yeah, okay, population. I'll do it. I'll do it. By, the time, by the time you get back to me, I'll have it done. All right, fantastic. Uh, we got more news, more information, hopefully some answers. My name's Steve Appel, you're dialed into Work Comp Matters. We are brought to you by theworkcompcentral.com. If you want the number one location for workers' compensation in both California and around the United States, check out theworkcompcentral.com. They've got a free seven day offer. And if you want to pick up their services, I have them. You should too. Only a buck a day. Work Comp Matters also brought to you by A1 Law, number one computer management system. 818 357 4120 for your no strings attached, money back guaranteed. Also, $1 a day. A1 Law. Uh, Mike, hopefully you have a new story. And then, John, you're next. The California Assembly, already mired in a scheduling mess, announced that lawmakers and staffers would not be coming back to the Capitol next Monday as originally planned because five lawmakers and staffers tested positive for the coronavirus, according to an email obtained by the San Francisco Chronicle. And and actually, just for, clar- just for clarification, I think that was the one lawmaker and four other staffers. But go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. That's as I recall, yeah. A new return date has not been set. The legislature broke for an unprecedented emergency recess in March as the coronavirus pandemic took hold and was away from Sacramento until May. After passing the state budget late last month, lawmakers left town again with the plan to return next week to finish the session, which ends August 31st. One assemblywoman, Autumn Burke, Democrat from Inglewood, wrote on Twitter on Monday that she tested positive for COVID-19 and will remain in quarantine with her daughter until a doctor instructs her otherwise. John, you're up with the next story, please. Oh, well, I was just checking on Germany and uh, according, according to Statista, which is a website I've never used before, uh, it says that Germany has tested approximately 5.8 5.8 million people so far, um, which is, you know, a population of 90 million. And how many hey, John? Found, How many were found positive? Hold on, Mike. And how, uh, out of that no, 5 million, how many positive? Didn't say that. I can, I can go back in. I just, I just accessed it just a while ago. 
Um, it had the small, I'll go back. I'm, I'm in a different site now and hang on. Well, no, I'm uh, okay, John, John, why don't you go ahead and look for that? And I can find some sort of a boring non-fake news story. No, I have a question. <laughs> I, have a question. I have a question if I may. Uh, uh, Mike, yeah. John, Mike, Mike, John, yeah. Mike, d- does yes. the, can the question wait or do you have a burning desire to ask the question now? I have a burning desire. Go ahead. John, does Germany test asymptomatic folks? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, John, keep looking. As COVID-19 infections spread rapidly through California prisons, authorities yesterday announced the replacement of the state correctional system top medical officer and governor of the GAV criticized an earlier decision to transfer hundreds of inmates from a Chino facility that had been baffling an outbreak. The leadership shakeup occurred as corrections officials reported three more deaths over the July 4th weekend among inmates at San Quentin State Prison, where more than one third of inmates have tested positive the death toll is now at six. Mike, you've got the new new. You got the next news story, and hopefully, John has an answer for us. Go ahead, Mike. Uh, not, yeah, but I have a question for you on that last story because I read it too. Sure. And, sure. And that is, didn't you find it odd that they didn't identify the guy who got canned or the woman who got canned? I huh. find I find everything about the COVID nineteen and prison system odd. Yes, I do. Well, no, but I mean, you know, I mean, this is a public official who obviously was considered incompetent in, in his or her job, and yet the LA Times deems it, what, a state secret? A California state secret to, to identify the person? And what kind of nonsense is that? I mean, you know, isn't the LA Times, aren't they part of the same group of people who are always defending freedom of the press and the right to publish information and the right to go public with stuff because the public has a right to know? What happened? I don't know, that's a very good question. Yeah, that ticks me off. All right. Well, we'll take some of that ticked off energy and find (laughs) out how many people have been positively diagnosed with COVID-19 in Munich, Germany. Mike, you've got the next news story. In a major setback, Sacramento County health officials said Monday they will shut five coronavirus testing sites this week in underserved communities due to a growing shortage of testing materials. County Health Chief, Dr. Peter Bielenson said the last five of the, the last of the five centers, one in Natomas, will be open on Tuesday, then all five will shut down indefinitely. Quote, it's a big hit, he said. UC Davis, which does the test for us, doesn't have the materials. There's a shortage nationally. Now, Steve, I don't know whether you heard this, but, you know, there was that huge testing site at Dodger Stadium. It was closed for a couple of days because, as I understand it, they had money problems. They have since found a source of dough and they've opened back up. But as I understand it, since they resumed testing at Dodger Stadium, the wait is pretty long. So that the whole testing thing is in a state of flux. I, th- I think the, the lines to be tested everywhere are long. And um, we've got a couple of minutes left in the show. And, John, there's no rush. If you can't get me my number today, you can get it tomorrow. I got it. I okay, got it. fantastic. So out of, out of 90 million uh, citizens or people living in Munich, Germany, how many have been diagnosed with COVID-19? Well, for Germany as a whole, the confirmed number of cases was 198,172. So that's about two. Per, that's about two percent. Yeah, and and the in Bavaria, which Munich is the big, biggest city in Bavaria, that was the, the most. We had 48,400 confirmed and 2,594 deaths. But a popu- Germany has a population of approximately 90 million and about 2% uh, have been diagnosed, correct? Yeah. You believe that figure or you think it's off? 
Oh no, the Germans. The Germans are very transparent. I mean, like I say, the, t- the test they tested 5.8 million people. So out of 5.8 million, only 200,000 were positive. So they tested. They tested about six percent of the population. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. So 98 percent of the population either are not diagnosed or have uh, uh, not been tested. Well, actually, it's about over 90 percent have not been tested. And two percent, two percent have been diagnosed with it. You got over ninety uh, percent of the population walking around that can catch it. Yeah, although the curve here is definitely flat. For instance, on the eighth of June, the number of deaths was three hundred one. On the third of July, it was four hundred and twenty-two. I mean, it's it's really low. I mean, it was a, it was at a height of uh, 5,400. I think these are or these are cases actually. It was 5,400 in, in April, and now the new cases are down to, like I said, 500. You know. Yeah, it's pretty well, you, you won't catch me socializing with any more than nine other people, and I'm keeping it to like six if I can. And then if indeed when that happens, I'm practicing my social distancing, I'm keeping my mask around, there's no way I'm going to a protest with hundreds of people. There's no way I'm going uh, to gatherings uh, with, uh, hundreds of people. I, I just choose not to take the risk. Uh, John burning thoughts, desires were pretty much out of time. No, I've got, I, I want to do a segment on war crimes committed by the Trump administration, but I can save that. for the moment. Okay. Yeah. Let's, let's go ahead and save that till next year. Uh, I meant tomorrow. Thank you, John. <laughs> uh, Mike, Mike, any burning desires? No, thank you. All right. Well, it's been a pleasure being with you for another edition of Work on Matters. And for those of you that wanted to hear John talk about Donald Trump's war times, well, you'll just have to turn war crimes. You'll just have to tune in uh, tomorrow. I want to thank the madman across the water, Mr. John Scalia, my chief of staff, Dr. Mike Zima, Scott Walton of legendary Uncle's Studios. And all the good people back at WorkComp Central that continue to support and approve of this valuable project, including but not limited to Ms. Kristen Chavez. My name is Steve Appel. We'll see you again tomorrow at noon for another edition of WorkComp Matters.